Okay, we're back stripping down the engine. The first protocol was to take the clutch housing off. When I opened the clutch cover, you could immediately see a sort of an explosion of plastic shards from both the cam chain guide and the oil pump sprocket. There were no teeth left on the oil pump sprocket when I finally took it out. I'm not sure what caused this, but I knew pretty much straight away that I'd need to strip down the rest of the engine to clean these parts out. Once the clutch cover was taken off, uh, I took off the alternator cover to see if there was any damage um, on that side. Fortunately, there was none, and this allowed me to move the pistons up and down uh, to see if the conrod was okay. Had I moved the pistons up and down and only one came up, then I knew there was a big problem. But fortunately, they were absolutely fine. They looked a bit of a mess where the inlet valves had uh, smacked the top of them. But other than that, they were going up and down absolutely fine. The final thing I needed to do before splitting the cases was to take out the oil sump cover and the oil sump. This is pretty straightforward, just following the instructions from the Haynes manual, uh, doing the bolts in order. Uh, but again, I could see more sort of congealed melted plastic in the sump filter. It was completely clogged, the, um, the filter itself. I'm not sure how any oil could have passed through it. All right, now for main event, splitting the cases. Once the oil sump was taken off and the engine case bolts were removed, this just needed a little bit of persuasion from the rubber mallet, but eventually um, it came off. You might be sort of wondering why I didn't take off the flywheel, and the simple answer is because I couldn't. It was practically welded on. When it finally did come off, some while, some time later, uh, the pressure behind it practically threw it out of the shed. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, very very difficult to take off and wasn't that necessary uh, at the moment. So there you have it, the case is now split, we can see the conrod and the gears uh, and I'm ready to take the pistons out and give them a clean up. So the engine cases are going to uh, shot blast and powder coat and in order to do that I need to take off some of the bolts, I've got a bit of a problem. So on the, on the sump where it connects to the bash plate there are some bolts that hold it on and if you see that just down there see these here and they're held on by rubber mounts and as you can see these have snapped underneath those rubber mounts it's got it screws into the actual sump itself um, but as you can see I can't take these off now they're supposed to be 20 mil however they're so thin you can't get any purchase on them. So today I'm going to find a welder and we're going to get these welded to weld a bolt to it and take it off. Oh, we've got more good looking glasses out when you want to So yesterday I picked up the the frames from powder coat and I'm really happy with the result. They look amazing. Come and have a look. Originally all the frames were black, uh, but what I've done is I've gone with white for the so the main frame. And I've gone for I think this is the, on the powder coat this is called flame red for the swing arm and for the subframe. Even though you're not really going to see much of the subframe because it just holds the uh, the petrol tank and the, and the pegs, most of this is going to be hidden, uh, but I just wanted to get both done to the same. So let's open these up and take a look at what they actually look like in the flesh. Mm -hmm. 